Have you ever wondered what's on the moon? Do you want to know about the moon? Let's go check it out. Oh, right. We'll come back later. The lunar surface is dominated by two primary rock types, and those are the Maria and the Highlands. It's actually the same kind of rocks that we find here on Earth, just different, slightly different chemical compositions. The Maria, or Mare, which was Latin for seas, they thought they were large seas on the lunar surface when they first identified them, are actually basalt. So this is an example of a z prototype xenolith within basalt. You don't quite get it like this on the moon, but there are olivine grains and same kind of feldspar, clinopyroxene. There's also a lot of ilmenite and cristobalite. Ilmenite because there's lots of titanium in the lunar basalts. And then the other one, which I don't have an exact example of, but it's actually a feldspar, kind of like labradorite. This is a sodium calcium feldspar. And the type that's on the moon, that's the white, is the anorthosite which is pretty much just Celsic feldspar. So what are those two rock types, the dominant features on the moon? Well, to answer that question, we'll have to go way back and look at the formation of the moon and its evolution since then. Fortunately, I have a couple of resources that can help us in elucidating this, like the origin of the Earth and moon. That seems pretty handy. Let's see, accretion, formation, impact triggered formation of the Earth moon system. The differentiation of the Earth and moon. What do we want to talk about? Core formation. Never mind. That gets a little too into the weeds. Let's go to the planetary scientist companion. The two major types of terrain on the lunar surface are Maria and Highlands. The Maria are the younger dark plains formed by basalt flows and flooded impact basins. Because they are younger than the Highlands, the Maria are less heavily cratered. So basically, what happened was the moon used to be basically completely molten. It was just a big ball of fire in the sky. It was actually about a quarter of the distance away from the Earth as it is now, so it was a lot closer. What happens when the moon starts to crystallize from a giant molten blob of lava is that there's a thing called the Bones Reaction Series, which kind of dictates which minerals crystallize first based on their crystallization temperatures. And two of the main ones are olivine and clinopyroxene, which are two of the things that are in basalt. Those are a lot denser than the magmatic surface, magma ocean it's called, and those start to sink down towards the mantle, or they start to sink towards the core and form the mantle. After a certain time, feldspar comes on the liquidus, in this case, an orthosite feldspar, calcium rich, and that's a lot less dense than the, that magma reservoir, or not maybe not a lot less dense, but it's less dense, and so it actually floats to the surface, forms kind of a, an orthosite crust, and that's the highlands. And then there's kind of like the dregs of this magma ocean that crystallized between the olivine cumulate and this anorthosite, basically pure anorthosite crust. And then what happens is large meteorite impacts. These giant impacts, those circular features that you see on the surface of the moon, those dig into the anorthosite highland crust. They both provide a weak crust for underlying mantle and lava to extrude through, and also they might just excavate it out entirely and go down into the mantle in some cases of the largest impact basins. When the moon was more geologically active and was a little hotter, there was enough material and heat to extrude lava out onto the surface, and what happened was that filled those basins, partly because it was a weak uh, crust at, that, at those places. And so that's why you have those maria that are confined to the basins, those filled in the depressions of the large impact craters. And by and large, those maria are between about three and four billion years old, whereas the highlands, or the anorthosite, those tend to be more like 3.9 to 4, 4.2 billion years old. There are a couple of other rock types in there. There's stuff called creep, which is potassium, rare earth element, and phosphorus-enriched materials. And there's also uh, magnesium, more mantle rocks, basically, that have been excavated. I think we should take a closer look at the moon now. Here we go. There's the moon. Oh, that's not a very good video, is it? Hmm. Let's go back inside. Not that way. This way.
Those canisters were full of lunar panoramas, from, reprints from the Apollo era. And what I've laid out here are very long strips. This is what the images were taken as from lunar orbiters, both from satellites and preliminary uh, Apollo missions. And what I wanted to point out here is over here we have a large crater and then a central peak which usually forms like a mountainous thing in the center of the of the crater and I think that might I think this might be King Crater I'm not 100% they're not really labeled and then there's a lot of ejecta kind of that feathery pattern as you go out from the crater is all a, a lot of ejecta and that's mixed highlands and Mare material. And then down here, I think this might be a different view of the same central peak at a slightly different oblique angle, relatively flat, a little bit of, you know, uh, uplift, uh, floor fractures. You can get really close to these and there's little, you know, lava valleys that might have thermally eroded out the crater floors. Obviously lots of post large impact impacts. There's some crater walls here. Maybe some of this is a landslide deposit flumped down back into the crater, kind of like Meteor Crater. And over on this side, there's this large pool of almost flat looking, kind of glassy black, this blob with a little bit of a peak in the middle. And this is Mare. Not the huge, or Maria, this is not the huge Maria that fills the impact basins on the near side, but it is a basalt that filled in after the impact of the large crater. And that's kind of what happened on a, on a large scale on the near side, where you get these lavas that get emplaced. And then it's almost night and day when you go from the Maria to the highlands or older material surrounding it, the number of impacts that you see, the number of modification features that are in there. There's a few, there's a few blocks. Maybe this is an impact down through the Maria into the underlying highland material. So there's a little bit of white around it. And over here on the, the highlands, it's just chock full of uh, small impact craters. Here's a couple of panoramas from the Apollo 17 mission. I'm not sure if this was of the Apollo 17 site or just a crater that they were flying over as they were doing surveying, perhaps for future missions. But you can see there's overlap between the two and due to the orbital differences, it kind of, that difference kind of decreases as you go from left to right here, it spreads out more. But they got a good overlap with this large complex crater and then a couple of simple craters, a little bit elongated perhaps. And then these ones are definitely simple craters. It's just a shallow depression with almost a flat bottom, perhaps from landslides. The simplest craters might be like this where it's shallow bowl shaped. You can see these white streaks of ejecta, kind of linear patterns going out in all directions. And that's very characteristic of impacts as it spreads the ejecta material out. Perhaps you can almost get a sense of the of a crater rim that's elevated, kind of like Meteor Crater, and then it slopes away towards the more or less baseline valley or whatever the original elevation of the surrounding floor was.